I'm really starting from zero here. When I first purchased my house at the end of last year, I knew that I wanted to invest in rewilding my backyard space. As a person who cares deeply about nature and the environment, I knew that adding native plants was a must. So I set out to my local garden center with my well-researched plant list to look for native plants. And when I got there, I mostly just got blank stares and confused looks. <laughs> Join me today as I try to find reliable sources to buy native plants and seeds so that I can transform my backyard into a welcoming and beautiful space that can help support wildlife in my area. You may be asking yourself, why should I even bother with planting native plants? Well, for one, they do provide food for pollinators. Things like bees, butterflies, bats, birds, and things that if you are a home gardener who likes to grow fruits and veggies, having more pollinators is definitely a benefit. Also, having a wildlife friendly backyard or habitat is going to attract the type of insects and type of other creatures that are going to eat the pests that we don't enjoy being in our yards. So mosquitoes, ticks, anything that can get rid of those annoying uh, insects. I'm all about inviting those creatures into my yard. You can definitely beautify your space by having more native flowers, wildflowers, and all other types of shrubs and trees and other beautiful things. Native plants, once established, are going to require less chemical fertilizer inputs, less heavy watering regimens, because they're designed to be in your region, they are already well adapted to your climate and your soil. All right, secondly, you might be asking yourself, does it really even matter if I plant my yard with non-native ornamental plants or if I add native plants to my yard? And essentially the answer to that is, when planting the non-native ornamentals, you can get one of two things. Either one, they're completely sort of sterile, they don't really provide any food to organisms that might be living in your area, but they're not causing any harm either. So in that case, if you have some of those plants just because you like them, just because you think they're pretty, I mean, that's fine. Um, but we really want to avoid, avoid things that are invasive, things that are non-native and that have a high tendency to spread or escape the place where they're planted because they can do a lot of damage and a lot of harm in the environment. And in terms of does it matter at all to plant native plants? Absolutely. We like to think of our parks and big wild spaces as a place where animals and nature lives, but as our human developments get bigger and bigger, the space for nature gets smaller and smaller. The only way that we can coexist in this world is if we find ways to share the spaces. So if I can share a little bit of my backyard space with nature, provide a place where bees and butterflies and other things can stop over from one place that they're going to the next, then that is going to really benefit wildlife in my area and help to support that native ecosystem. Last year, I was just so excited to get started growing. I was growing in some raised beds and also some containers at my mom's house. The only really sunny spot we had to grow was in our side yard right along our driveway and our fence. So I added to the garden that was already there with some raised beds, some green stock growing containers, grow bags, and whatever I could grow things in. It was a really successful garden year for me. Really productive in the things that we grew, fruit and veggies. And the thing I really struggled with was my pollinator garden. All right, so we did do a pollinator garden around the base of one of our trees. Um, I've got some phlox and some butterfly weed. So you can see one little orange flower there. It's a little late in the season when I planted it. So I'm not expecting a ton of flowers this year, but perhaps by next year, it'll be doing much better. One of the biggest struggles that I had with planting my pollinator garden or native plant garden was that I couldn't find native plants in my local garden center. I did ask the folks at the garden center and they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we don't have that. Um, I did pick up some echinacea and butterfly weed and a couple of other things. 
Um, I found out later that this one was a hybrid variety and so really didn't provide much in terms of ecological benefit, but I had to had a couple things, bee balm and milkweed, that I got other places that did survive and were a great addition. One thing that I did get was a redbud tree, um, which is doing quite well in the yard right now, and I'm pretty happy about that addition to the garden. This is the redbud tree that we planted for September earlier in the year. As you can see, the spring flowers have gone and they are now replaced by these beautiful heart-shaped leaves. Ooh, the wind. Look at that. We did expand our bed and reduce our lawn size right here. So you'll see the cardboard boxes are part of me trying to suppress the grass that's trying to grow up. Once that grass dies, I'll plant some more flowers there and add some more mulch on top. The one place that proved to be successful for me in shopping for native plants was at native plant sales. A lot of the local parks in my area offered native plant sales where different vendors from native plant nurseries came in and offered their plants. And while this was not necessarily the cheapest way to build out a new garden bed, I did really love the varieties of plants that I was able to get and these plants tended to survive better than anything that I got at garden centers. Here is a lovely Joe Pye weed that I got at a native plant sale. And behind it, I have a Baptisia or wild blue indigo. And I didn't have a ton of success with starting flowers from seed, but as you can see, this bee balm or wild bergamot did quite well and was just really beautiful to witness. So this year, I really wanna focus more on growing from seed. All right, friend, at this point, I'm guessing that you are thinking, well, this is all well and good, but I don't live where you live and I can't go to those same native plant sales, so where am I supposed to find my plants? I wanted to share with you uh, there is a tool online called Native Plant Finder. This is produced by the Na National Wildlife Federation. And you can just Google Native Plant Finder or you can go to their website. I will put a link in the description box below. And there's different tools on here about how to find native plants. So scrolling through this website, I wanted to touch on a little bit in case you are interested in learning more about research about why planting native plants is important. You can check that out here. More about how to use the tool, what's offered, more about uh, Mr. Doug Tallamy who wrote books like Bringing Nature Home and Nature's Best Hope, um, which are all about how to use your own backyard garden to support wildlife. I read a couple of his books and listen to some of his lectures and they are quite inspiring. So if you're looking for even more information about how to get started, that is a good place to start. So we can go into our native plant finder tool. You can set your location, put in your zip code. Okay. And when your zip code loads, it did take a second for me. It will tell you all of or some of the native plants that you can find in your region. It'll give you some suggestions. So like for me, it says goldenrod would be good or sunflower or Joe Pye, which I did plant last year and hope to plant at my new house as well. And you can click on one of these plants. It'll give you more information about the plant. Um, it'll say how many species use that particular plant as a host plant meaning the thing that they lay their eggs on or that's important for some part of their life cycle uh, there should be a picture here and then also you can find places to purchase these plants you can toggle back over to this about page where it says about this tool how to use it why native 
why care about butterflies, how to choose your plants, and then over to suppliers. And there is uh, Garden for Wildlife, which I think specifically benefits National Wildlife Federation. And let's take a look at that. This is very cool. This is, I believe, throughout the United States, um, they can ship plants to you. I find that these are not necessarily the most budget friendly ways to get plants. You can see here they have butterfly milkweed plant sets from $38. Um, I'm sure the plants are great, but this is not something that I would consider buying. I don't consider it to be budget appropriate, but it is a cool tool that you can definitely use. And They've got this nursery directory where you can search by your area to find nurseries that are closer to you. So this is very, very cool. I encourage you to check it out and see where there might be some plants near you. I am going to shop today at Prairie Moon Nursery. I ordered a catalog from them because one of my coworkers who at my day job who also is really into native plants mentioned that she used Prairie Moon Nursery when she got started growing her native plants in her garden and that she found it very affordable to get plant sets and seeds from them to get started. And look at that, they're having a sale. Um, I just might have to pick up some plants. Okay. So, some of the things that I thought was really cool, especially about this site, is that you can search by what type of plant that you need. So, plants for sun, plants for shade, plants for pollinators, types of grasses. I also really like that you can get seeds and seed mixes. So, I'm looking for seeds, and they have these like seed pack collections. I really like this for being, you know, somewhat still a novice in this area. I don't know every single native plant. I don't know every single best way to grow them. And they have these collections where it's a certain type of plants all together, which will help you get started. So let's say I really want to attract more birds to my yard. And so it suggests that I could get these six packets of seeds, plant these plants together throughout my yard and they'll all have different bird benefits. So here's a picture of what the little seed packets look like. Very cute. Let's look at each of the plants. And I just think that this is really, really cool. And so $18 for six seed packets. So that's $3 a seed pack. That's not like super cheap for seed packs, but it is way cheaper than buying fully grown plants. You know, the best I probably could do is four or $7 for a really small plant at, uh, from a nursery. So here's some information about the plants. It says full to partial sun, medium to medium dry, height two to six feet. Um, the bloom times, which is really cool because they're kind of starting from early time all the way through to September. So it's giving you a variety of different color throughout the season. Advantages for birds and bees and zones four through seven. Here are the species. We've got columbine, wild white indigo, partridge pea, purple coneflower, showy sunflower, and cut plant. And it does have a warning here that cut plant can be quite aggressive and it encourages you not to plant that if that is outside of your, outside of the appropriate native range for that plant because it can be quite aggressive in its growing. And if you're curious about that, does it have something on it? cup plant so this is cup plant and it can get to be really tall and really beautiful and even you know take over a section of your yard so again 
you know, mind that warning, I believe that they did list, where's the zone map? The range map for this plant. So I can see that. Can you zoom on this plant? I can see that in my area in Ohio, it is present and native and not rare. So it would be appropriate for me to plant. But let's say if I lived somewhere else in the country or in one of these pink areas where they have it listed as a noxious weed. So that means that the government doesn't want you to plant it. It would be recommended to not do so. Okay. But I think that this is a really great place to start. I'm really excited about this. I like that they have these little collections. And so I think that this is a really good place for me to start. I want to do the bird benefit collection. And I also saw another one that I thought was really, really nice. I loved this understory collection. I just thought that the plants in it were so unique and pretty. And if you have a really shady garden, this might be a good option for you. Some of the flowers. Wow. Aren't these so pretty? Okay. So maybe that. And then also this beginner collection because I'm really starting from zero here. There's almost nothing to speak of at my new house in terms of native plants so I'm really starting you know starting from zero I want even the things that people might think are um, ordinary at this point if you're really into native plants you might not be that excited about the black-eyed Susan or brown-eyed Susan and you might not think it's that special but um, I do feel like these could be kind of the structure of what my new landscaping could be so I think I also might start here guys let's let's be beginners together because I would love to have some cone flower this cone flower black eyed Susan this purple yellow come into summer oh, that'd be so awesome okay so these are more late season June July August October September purple, yellow, green, blue, benefiting bees. And we've got purple prey coneflower, purple coneflower, wild bergamot, black-eyed Susan, little blue stem, and smooth blue aster, and a ton of seeds. So <laughs> lots of space to experiment. And this says for a naturalized look, combine all them together. I probably wouldn't do this. I think I'm probably gonna start mine in pots so that I can kind of group them and cluster them and create more of a um, managed landscape look with native plants as opposed to like all wild prairie. I do have some seed and packet mixes, which I might do like a section of prairie, but I don't want my whole yard to be that. So let's add this one to the cart. Yay! I was really debating also buying plants, some like plant starts. They also have these like three packs. We can get three plants together for some sort of a deal. Or you could get what they call power packs. So this would be nine plants, three of each plant. Um, so that you get a little bit of variety um, with plants grouped together based on what they might benefit. So benefiting the rusty patch bumblebee, benefiting hummingbirds, ooh, so pretty, benefiting monarchs, and there was one that I really liked, this wasp one, which I felt like had a really interesting flowers in it. A lot of those like wild, um, a lot of the like flat compound flowers. So that lovely yellow, so pretty. Like I thought that that would just be really nice, which is a rose milkweed, a mountain mint, and a golden alexander. 
I really would like to buy this, but I think that because I am still planning to do some native plant sales come springtime, I'm going to save my purchasing of live plants for that time of the year, and I'm going to purchase just the seeds for now. It is hard to <laughs> rein myself in, especially at this time of year when it is cold and gray and gloomy and all you want is the beauty of summer plants. It feels like you need to buy every single thing right now, um, but you don't. You have time. And even if it gets to the middle of the summer and there's a specific plant that I want that I can't find, that will be okay too because it is going to take years to build up you know my ideal garden it's not going to happen all in one season i have time so we are going to resist the 60 dollar <laughs> plant pack and just stick with the seeds for today thanks so much for sharing your time with me today in the garden i truly believe that we can all make a difference for nature by taking time to add native plants to our yards little by little. Let me know in the comments box below, are you planning to add any pollinator gardens or other native plantings to your backyard this year? And if you're looking for more ideas for ways to incorporate native plantings, you can watch my seven native planting ideas video, which I will link in the cards and in the description box below. This year, I've got some big dreams for my backyard garden. I'm hoping to establish some uh, raise beds for some fruit and vegetable garden, start composting, and add some native plants in the landscaped areas around my yard. If you'd like to follow along my journey, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you can be sure to hear about all of my upcoming videos. Until next time, friend, happy gardening. Bye!